Hello everyone and welcome to our discussion on flexible budgets and standard costs. So in this first video we're going to focus on direct materials variances. So the first thing I want to introduce to you is the chart that we'll be using to demonstrate these variances. So here's what the chart looks like that we'll be using. And I'm going to label it specific here in the beginning, and as we move along in other videos, I'll probably start ab abbreviating them. And each one of these little areas, so this right here, this right here, and this, we're going to call pegs. So we have peg 1, peg 2, and peg 3 in that prim primary chart there. So that's when I say pegs, that's, that's what I'm talking about. So in peg 1, we're going to take the actual quantity... And we're going to multiply that times an actual price. And we'll define all these here in just a little bit. Okay, so that's peg one. Peg two will be actual quantity times a standard price. And the last peg will be standard quantity times a standard price. Now, the difference in pegs 1 and 2 is what we call a price variance. The difference in pegs 2 and 3 is a quantity variance. And down at the bottom, the secondary little diagram there, this is called our flexible budget variance. Now let's talk about each one of these pieces that make up this whole puzzle here. The first one we'll talk about is actual quantity. Actual quantity here refers to the actual materials. Notice we're doing materials variances. So when we look at actual quantity, in this instance, we're looking for actual quantity of materials. We're not looking for production level. This is actual quantity of materials. Actual price would be the actual price that we paid. This is typically in a unit level. So it would be the cost per yard of materials, or the cost per pound, something like that. So, for example, if it was if it was a cost per pound, then actual quantity would need to be in pounds. So make sure that your units are matching there, and that'll make it a little bit easier for you. So we've already talked about actual quantity. If we move on to, to peg number two, we have actual quantity there, which we've already talked about. Now we can talk about standard price. Standard price is the price that you should have paid. So like a budgeted price. So the standard, what you should have paid per pound of material or per square yard of material, whatever the case may be. In the last peg, we've already talked about standard price. We'll talk about standard quantity. Now, this peg, specifically this number, standard quantity, usually gives learners the most difficulty when it comes to standard costing. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you a definition that I want you to kind of remember and put stars all around. The definition is what should have happened at the actual level of production. Okay, so what should have happened at the actual level of production. That is standard quantity. So very, very important that we remember that definition. If you will use and remember that, remember that definition, it will help you get standard quantity right more often than you would if you didn't use this definition, I promise you. So to talk more about price variance, quantity variance, and the flexible budget variance, we're just going to use an example to, to see how we calculate these numbers and how all this diagram kind of works together. Okay, so here we have Salisbury, Inc., which is a privately held furniture manufacturer. For August, Salisbury had the following standards. So as we're reading through these, we have to start picking out these, these keywords. So standards for its products, a wicker chair, 
So direct materials are two square yards of input at $5 per square yard. Direct labor is a half hour of input at $10 per hour. The following data were compiled regarding actual performance. So very important actual stuff here. Actual output in units, which are chairs, produced is 2,000. Square yards of input purchased and used was 3,700. Price per square yard was $5.10. Direct labor costs were $8,820. And actual hours of input were 900. Labor price per hour was $9.80. So what they're asking us to do here is to compute the price, quantity, and flexible budget variances for direct materials. So the first thing we should do is draw the chart and label everything. So do that now. All right, so here I've drawn the, e, um, the, the chart and I've labeled everything. So that makes it a little bit easier for us to put things into our chart. So the first peg is actual quantity times actual price. So they tell us in the story that the actual quantity of materials used and purchased was 3,700. All right, so I'm going to put that into my actual quantity here. Now, that is in yards. So when I find my actual price, I need to make sure it's a price per yard. The actual, we're looking for actual information here. So the price per square yard was $5.10. So now I can do the math there, and I find that my actual cost is $18,870. That's my actual price, and that's the price, or my actual cost. Now in the second peg, we need actual quantity times standard price. Well, we've already found actual quantity in the first peg, so we'll just bring it over. Now I need the price that I should have paid. So I'm going to look for my standard information in the story, and that was up here at the top. So I need my standard price per square yard. So we had two square yards of input at $5 per square yard. So there's my price per square yard, my standard cost. And so if we multiply that through, we get $18,500. Now before we calculate any variances, I'm just going to calculate all the pegs so that we'll have that information. So standard price, we already have. We'll go ahead and pull that over here to my last peg. Now I need standard quantity. Now usually this number you're going to have to calculate this based on two things. If you think back to the definition that I just gave you, what should have happened at the actual level of production. So let's first thing, let's find the actual level of production. So they tell me in the story that the actual output in units produced, which are chairs, was 2,000. So that's the actual level of output. So remember that what should have happened at the actual level of production. So the actual level of production was 2,000. Well, what should have happened? So we're looking at material variances. So how much material should we have used per chair? Well, let's see. It tells us in the story up here in the standard information that we should have used two square yards of input. So we should have two square yards of input. So the standard quantity is actually 4,000 square yards times $5 gives us $20,000 in standard costs. Now we can calculate our variances. So if we take the difference in pegs one and two, we get a variance, a price variance of $370. Now variances are either favorable or unfavorable. They're never negative, they're just favorable or unfavorable. So no matter which peg you subtract from the other, it's never a negative number. But before we put a sign on it, let's go ahead and calculate the quantity variance. So the difference in pegs two and three is $1,500. And now we have to have a, a sign, I call it a sign. But um, remember, it's not really a negative or positive, it's an unfavorable or favorable sign. So what I like to do is just think about the, the only differences in pegs 1 and 2. So let's focus on pegs 1 and 2 right now and just ignore all the numbers. So the only difference in pegs 1 and 2 is price because quantity is the same. So let's just focus on price. So the actual price that we paid was $5.10 per square yard, but we should have only paid $5 per square yard. So we paid $0.10 cent more per square yard than we should have. That's not a good thing. So that would be an unfavorable variance. Let's look at the difference in pegs 2 and 3. The only difference in pegs 2 and 3 is quantity, because price is the same. 
So we actually used 3,700 square yards of materials, but at our level of production, 2,000 chairs, we should have actually used 4,000 square yards. So we actually used 300 square, square yards less than we thought we would have at our level of production. That's a good thing. So that is a favorable variance. Now we can calculate the overall variance, which is the flexible budget variance, a couple of different ways. We can sum our two variances, and because they have different signs, we would get a difference in these two. Okay, so the difference in these two is 1130, and we bring down the sign with the highest number. So the highest number in, in these two is 1500, so we'd bring down the favorable sign. That's one way we could do it. Another way we could calculate the overall flexible budget variance is to take the difference in pegs 1 and 3. So our actual cost was $18,870, and the standard cost, the cost we should have incurred, was $20,000. So we actually paid less than we thought. That's a good thing, and the difference in the two is $1,130, and therefore it would be favorable. Now, it's great that we can calculate these variances, but we also need to be able to interpret them. So let's think about what they're telling us here. So why would we have an unfavorable price variance? Well, we would have to be paying more than we thought we would. That would give us an unfavorable price variance. Why would we do that? Why would we pay more for our material here than we plan to? Well, in some cases, we pay more because we think we're getting a better quality product. Well, are we getting a better quality product? Think about that for a second and look at our quantity variance. Remember, quantity variance is based on materials used, and it's favorable, meaning we did not use as much material as we thought we would have to. So this is actually indicating that, yeah, we paid a little bit more, and it looks like we got a really good quality product. So that's why our overall variance is still favorable, because we paid just a little bit more, but it didn't require as, many, as much materials as we thought. For example, if we're, if we're covering these, these chairs with this material, and it's a poor quality material, and every time I try to put cloth over this chair, it rips, then it's going to take more and more material for me to finally get a chair covered. In this case, we have a good quality material, so one, one time at covering the chair, it must do well, therefore... The, the waste that I may have um, thought about in, in creating these, these uh, budgets, these standard numbers, I really didn't need because I got a really good quality product. So it's always important that you think about these variances as you're calculating them. What are they telling you? So think through this process. Now, we think this is what's going on right now, but there's also labor involved. So we have to think about, well, maybe our labor is just really, really good. We don't know because we don't have those labor variances in front of us. In the next video where we're talking about labor variances, we'll actually do the same problem, but we'll calculate labor variances. And then we'll talk about the material and the labor variances together and see if we can see the full story. So lastly, we need to journalize these variances. So what I want you to know is always unfavorable variances are debits because they act like expenses, and favorable variances are credits because they decrease your expenses. Ultimately, unfavorable variances will increase cost of goods sold. Favorable variances will decrease cost of goods sold. So think about it that way. So with materials, we're actually going to journalize the purchase of materials and the use of materials. So the first one is the purchase of materials, which would encompass these numbers here. So we want to make sure we, we journalize those three numbers when we're talking about the purchase of materials. This is easy to remember because price variance starts with a P and purchased starts with a P. So that's the price variance is based on materials that you purchased. Okay, so the price variance is unfavorable. So we debit the price variance for 370. And the way I like to think about this is your vendors. So you purchase your materials from your vendors. And what does your vendors want you to pay them? They want you to pay them what you actually owe them. So the actual cost would be the credit to accounts payable. And the middle peg would be what you put into your materials inventory account. 
Now, when materials purchased equal materials used, as it did in this example, whatever you put into materials is what will come out of materials. Okay, so we'll credit materials for that same amount. So now we're looking at journalizing these three numbers when we're looking at the use of materials. Also, another, another standard is whatever the standard cost is, that is what you debit work in process for. So work in process always gets debited for the standard. And the variance is favorable, so it's a credit this time for 1500 Don't forget to give my video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and therefore you would get um, announcements of when new videos have been uploaded. Also, please visit my website at theaccountingdoctor.com, where you'll find other interesting accounting information, games, lecture notes, and even more videos.